Okay, I'm sorry I'm so late on this uh, Manic Monday preview here. But before I even get into that, I just want to say uh, I went through about 40 matches today, or maybe more. Uh, obviously not the full, but went through everything, a lot of stuff that I'd missed. Two matches I missed from yesterday that I want to talk about are, um, is, are Daniel Evans' one, uh, where he lost to Sosa and Osuza, and um, Risk and her comeback on Benchik. Uh, they both have played a lot of grass tennis, and I just want to show you right here. If you check on this, you can see all the green. Those are 14 matches that Evans played before he even came to Wimbledon. He won Surbiton, won uh, Nottingham, and like Risk, she had run, she also won Serbenton. She Then she won at her Toggenbosch the same time period. But then she only had one match after, just like Dan. If you notice here, he had one match after that. And then after that, Risk didn't play again. So she had a nice little break to recover before Wimbledon. Dan ended up playing Eastbourne as well. And I know it's grass and, you know, people are going to say, hey, you, you don't wear down that much. Not today. I mean, this isn't like the one-shot tennis as I described in the cert in my uh, condition stuff. Um, there's a lot of tennis, and you know, Dan actually did not have a tough, um, too tough. I mean, it was three sets. Now, bonus wasn't that easy, but yeah, he didn't really have a tough time before he got to Sousa or Sousa. But I could see it after the second set. His legs were feeling it. I could, I could see, and I think that's an accumulation. And he also said that his serve wasn't good like the whole Wimbledon his serve wasn't that good and he couldn't rely on it when he needed it uh, which is true I mean you could see he went up a break every set all five sets he went up the early break and Sousa came back and broke back and um, but I but what I, I you know it's true I mean the serve whatever I mean the thing is his backhand slice is just great on this surface and uh, no matter what kind of, no matter how the grass is playing and he was using it in a variety of ways and um Sosa was trying to get a hold of it. Uh, it was interesting. I watched one game on the, in the fifth set where Sosa was breaking back for the fifth, or how many times he broke back, but he was breaking back early in the fifth set. I think it was two to one he was down, and, he, and Dan was serving, Evans. And uh, Sosa, they had a backhand slice to forehand. There were a lot of, near the end of the match too. Back, Dan's backhand slice and Sosa you know, hitting it inside out back and his backhand slice to forehand backhand slice to forehand and I loved what Sousa did suddenly like he he was trying to figure this out and work it out and we're little I'm not going to get into all the little details of this because it'll take forever but the bottom line is he at this one juncture as they were going back and forth back and forth he suddenly got it a little bit short and a little bit set up and really went up and, and like did a, a real spin and tried to get some real pop on it and, and jumping off the court a bit. Now, it's not clay, but again, with the heavily felted ball and the way and a lot of the dead grass, a lot of the grass around, it was, he got it. It, it, it kind of jumped up and jumped up and away. And so Dan was coming on, in, on the cross court. Susan was hitting a cross court back to him and Dan was coming over to do the backhand slice and it was, and it hit started to pull away from him and it pulled him off and he just sliced it into the net so that's just one little like I mean some of these tactics you get in you know I don't care well if it's if the grass is too fast then you just serve a spoon and volley but you know when it's a little slower like this you get like all kinds of interesting things going on and uh, that was an interesting match that was fantastic I mean like I said I saw I mean I'm sure Evans would say no my legs were fine but I, I was seeing his legs were heavy after like about the middle of the match or so and it seemed like at times he was starting to grab over to his left hamstring I was wondering if he was having some cramping but that could have been just you know I have no idea it, it looked like he might have been grabbing over there uh, you know by the end of the match Sousa was you know, having some body fatigue as well but definitely better shape than Dan and and Sousa just hung in and hung in and fought and it was a it was a great match. I mean, it's great. I thought Dan because his at times his legs were going and at times he was just pushing it and and pushing those legs and running. They're probably burning and he was like, he was killing himself trying to get this uh, for the crowd. The crowd was going crazy and I felt bad for him. Right after it was over, he he went right off the court. I mean, he he was disappointed and uh, he said it's only going to take him forty five minutes to get over. Again, I, I don't know if you guys take everything that the players say, like the word of God, but uh, I would recommend not to. And honestly, I've always had an opinion about that. They do not have to tell you the truth. 
that is not what their job is. Their job is to play tennis. I'm not even sure they need to answer all these questions. It's like, if you really want to be an in-depth fan, watch the match and try to decide some things for yourself. Don't be you know, afraid to speculate. Everybody's so afraid. Oh, we don't know what's going on. It's okay. You can you know, have some educated guessing going on. There's nothing wrong with that. But I mean, the whole thing is to sit there and say, well, I'm going to listen to the interview and whatever the player says, the player knows everything about the balls. The player's going to tell me the exact truth of what's going on. They're going to tell me their routines. and their. I mean, this is crazy. And, and so there's so many questions. I, I do listen to interviews. I try to listen to them, but I, I whip through them quick because I'm not, you know, I don't have time to be listening to a lot of that sometimes. But anyways, but um, I, I felt bad. I mean, Dan, I think it's going to take him a little more than 45 minutes to get over. But anyway, uh, it was a great match, just a fantastic match. And then um, Allison Risk. Um, it's just been fantastic, and here's her. Uh, oh, here's some facts. You got everybody wants the facts, so here's the actual matches she played. And, um, and it, like I said, it's like Dan Evans, except after Mallorca, she did have a little left ankle thing going on. She has had her ankle taped. Uh, she didn't have her left ankle taped up until my through Mallorca. It, it was taped for the first time for Wimbledon, uh, but she had a little rest time and. You know, her matches at Wimbledon were definitely tougher than Evans has had. Um, she's had, again, and, and in fact, if you, again, I, I don't know if you guys can see this that well. A lot of these matches, all the way back to Surbiton, were like three set tough matches. I watched a decent amount of her stuff at Surbiton. Um, Reba Rakova, I watched some of her stuff, I should say. Um, Reba Rakova was a tough first set, I remember that. And then I and then I also um, saw most all of her, her Togginbosch. And yeah, Kuder Mertova and Burton's, she was fighting like crazy. And so... And then, I, then of course, Vikic, and, and she was down three love in the third set to Vikic. Uh, then their next match went three sets, nine, seven in the third. So let's just say, I mean, I don't know if Risk is going to come out and say it, but she's got some body fatigue. I mean, it's not like, you know, a shocker. She's got body fatigue after all that going on. And uh, and it was showing early on in the Benchik match. She, and Benchik was definitely a fresher body, I could tell, you know, you could tell. But Benchik just suddenly got like, I don't know what was happening with her, but I mean, there was frustration. Number one, too, again, I'm not going to go into all the details of the of the, the grass stuff, but um, Risk is doing some really cool stuff, has her serve going when she needs it. She's been clutch. She's been fighting. I mean, she, and she's good at grass anyway. She always has been, but, uh, and she has some real flat shots getting through the court, staying low, and it was frustrating Benchik. She's in better form. I mean, Risk is in great form right now, and she's fighting. Mean, she's... She's almost like Rafa. When Rafa gets a lot of matches, he's almost better being a little beat up and injured with a lot of matches than being totally healthy and not enough matches. Because then he's in the groove and knowing how to fight the rhythm and the whole thing. That's, that's where risk is right now. So she got through that match and she was nervous too. She's never been to the fourth round. I think it was nerves and there was some body fatigue and the whole thing. And she, and as she was frustrating Benchik and when the clutch moments, she was hitting lines and all this stuff, and Benchik was losing it. And, I mean, I think Benchik, if she could have kept herself calm, could have pulled this out, but she didn't. And But but I don't want to take that away from Risk. She played incredible. Maybe Benchik wouldn't have pulled it out. I don't know. But anyway, Risk is in the fourth round. Fantastic Pittsburgh girl. I grew up in Pittsburgh. I know she's a big Steeler fan. I was born in Dayton, Ohio, but grew up in Pittsburgh. Anyway... Um, it's going to be, I, I'm really excited for her. She, yes, she's going to be carrying some body fatigue in. Um, she's going to um, probably have some more nerves in that. But she's in a roll, man. So we'll see what happens. It'll be interesting. So in saying all that, let me jump through here now because this is already getting long. And it's late and long, so I'm not even sure who's going to be watching. But let me, uh, let me just um, get pump through the draw here. Number one, Sousa is going to play uh, Rafa. Uh, so good luck with that. I, I mean, Sousa's played great. I'm not trying to be smart about that. It's just, um, yeah, I, 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 that's not who you want to play uh, <laughs> when you have anything. I mean, he's going to have some body fatigue himself. There's no doubt, or at least some body feeling. You know, he's he's not going to be 100. percent And he's, it's, I, I don't expect much there. Uh, but but I I want to give him full credit. The first uh, per Portuguese to ever get 
to the second week of Wimbledon. Uh, Conta is starting to get her grass legs under her, and, and she, you know, she took some time off after the French, but she's starting to get her form, and Kvitova has missed a lot of time and had with a forearm injury. I, th I thought I had heard she wasn't even going to be in Wimbledon. I thought she was um, withdrawing from Wimbledon as well. Anyway, I have to go with Conta in this, um, but you know, Kvitova is really good at grass, so this will be interesting. Um, Kvitova, you know, cannon forehands are just fantastic on grass and the lefty serve. But yeah, well, I would have to stick with Conta though. Berrettini, a lot of people are saying, oh, he's, you know, Berrettini's been great. He's another guy who's had a big grass season, a lot of grass, a lot of play, a lot of, um, you know, stuff under his legs. Um, and playing great, he, to me, he was looking, I mean, he was frustrated by Schwartzman. This slow grass right now and the ball staying low, uh, that's making it better for Schwartzman. And you will seeing more clay quarters. It's not a joke. I mean, the grass is playing slower. I mean, it's, it's the truth. Uh, more clay quarters are getting into it. And especially a guy like Schwartzman because the ball's low, too. And that really frustrated Berrettini. And he actually admitted it candidly in his, in his interview. But he was also having some fatigue going on now. It's been, it's been a lot of tennis. So I just think when you apply the nerves, the first, it's, this is a big stage for him now. Against Roger, you apply that in. And when your body's a little fatigued, you're going to feel the nerves. You're going to feel that even more. It's going hit, to hit you even harder. So I think that's going to play into him. I don't think Federer's going to have a whole lot of trouble, I don't think. Um, Serena Navarro, I mean, Serena Williams is getting there. Gorgas actually was really fighting the second set. She had nerves. She feels not so confident still on grass, especially with someone like Serena. And But in the second set, she was really going for it. And I'm telling you, I thought for a minute Gorgas was going to pull that second set out somehow. And I think that would have been a wild third set, but it didn't happen. But Serena's looking, it's happening again. She had a good draw, not like her sister. She actually had an a easy draw to start, work her way into the tournament, and she's going to be tough to beat. No, I don't think it's going to be Navarro. Um, Halep, I think this is it for Goff. I, you know, look, I've I'm, I'm been yelling about Goff before most people I knew, uh, me and the other whack jobs that were watching her the last two years. But... Um, uh, I, I think this is I did, what, what an emotional week. What a crazy week. She may be on a high. Who knows? And maybe I'm wrong. I don't like to guess on emotions, but I'm having a feeling she might be somewhat flat. And I don't think this is going to happen against Caleb. I may not even be close. It may just be a. But hey, I never doubt her totally because she's such a fighter. Djokovic and Humbert. Um, again, Humbert. I've been watching him. He's really good at faster courts indoors. He's really good. Um, but not Djokovic, not on this stage. Again, this is going to be overwhelming for some of these people. Um, Barty and Risk, I, I've already talked about Risk. Barty's too good right now. Barty is in form and grass is good for her. It's slow grass might be even better. Um, I think Risk is going to give a fight, though, again. I think there's going to be a fight. It may even go three, but I, I don't even know if it will, but I've, I've got to go Barty. Um, Muchova is underrated. She's really good at grass, slower grass, too. And Pliskova with the power, and I know it's slower, but still the grass is taking the serve. Um, I've got to go Pliskova, but it may not be as easy as everybody thinks. Nishikori and Kukishkin, and Nishikori, I, that, I mean, Kukishkin's run out of, he, he runs out of steam anyway, so it's time for him to run out of steam now. Um, Goff and Verdasco, I think the same. I think Verdasco, he may give a pretty good fight, but I think it's, time for him to start to fade off here and I, maybe in the beginning it's going to be real tough maybe like a set of piece and a real tough third set and then Goffin gets that and then goes from there um, Goffin's playing a lot better again and he showed that in Halla too um, Pella is really good at slower grass and, and, and it's like I think my buddy Gil Gross was saying he's um, a clay court specialist but I mean this is a different age now and no Pella's proven it already yes I expect Pella to give Rainich a battle and maybe win. I, I don't even know that I want to give Rainich the favorite because he's not been in great form. I haven't been super impressed with him this week, the past week. Uh, I don't know. It, it's going to depend on the nerves, the big points, um, the moment, the big moment. You know, Pella going from the fourth round of the quarterfinals, a big deal. Um, the big stage where we court number, uh, what is that? Three. Yeah, I like Pella. I would almost be more nervous about him if he's on center court or something. But I think he's he's going to enjoy this. I have a feeling, but we'll see. It's going to be tight. I think it's going to be tight. Um, Strakova, another really good girl on um, grass or slow grass, too. 
um, all kinds of grass. And Merton's not bad, that it's slower helps, but I don't think that, um, I have a feeling Strakova. I, I do, but, but we'll see. And, and maybe, you know, it depends on both of those girls how their bodies feel right now and that will lead into the because the nerves will take over more with a dead body a tired body and that's going to be like I'm, I'm curious i don't know i'm not sure about that but i like strakova maybe query i like query um he's showing it a little bit like in his body a bit i saw that last match he, he again another guy who had a long layoff then played a whole bunch of grass real quick not as much as the other people but i showed but um, I, it may be starting to catch up to him, but I think, you know, Sandgren had a really tough match. So I, I'm going to go query for sure, but the serve, and, and he's just really good. He's good at any, I mean, he's good at Newport, Rhode Island, um, which is a fast grass, you know, the old fashioned style. Um, anyways, uh, cause at Newport, they have a fescue and the old stuff. Uh, who we got? Oh, Zhang Sui and Yastremska. Yastremska is really good at this. She's 19. She's nervous. Every match she's been nervous, but she's won. Zhang Sui is really fighting hard, and even against Wozniacki, so I'm wondering if she's going to have a little fatigue. If her body holds up well enough, I think Sui gets through this because of the nerves by the young girl, I think. Um, but it's going to be a good one. I think that's going to be a really good one. Um, Agut, I like Agut. I love, you know, Pear, we all like Pear, and he's really under the radar, getting better. I mean, he's been really doing well this year. I think people haven't noticed. He's more consistent and solid in the mind and everything, which we don't always see, but Agut's too strong, and as Gil Gross would say, his flat shots stay low. Um, Agut's just, he's too good. He's too good. He's too strong mentally and, and even physically. And I have a weird feeling we might see some pair fighting, fighting some good sets, and then all of a sudden some crazy stuff with his legs. Maybe, you know, like some crazy stuff there. But anyway, um, and then Agut will take over. Uh, and I think that is it for everybody. If I miss something, no, that's got to be it. So, okay, this was a long one and a late one, but did my best.